At Earthlink, we believe the internet can change the way you live, the way you work, the way you learn. Well, I was at Earthlink for for 10 years, and while I was there, you know, Earthlink stock went public, and overnight, my stock stock options were you know several million dollars. I show up to work the next day, and there were. Um, uh, administrative assistants showing up, you know, in their new, you know, Audi TTs and uh, VP showing up in their, you know, new Mercedes Benzes, and I uh, came to work with my uh, my car, you know, the '91 Geo Metro, <laughs> you know, three cylinders. <laughs> I'm Tom, and this is my wife Bree, and we live in Pomona, California, which is a suburb of Los Angeles. It is the fourth largest city in LA County. It's bigger than Pasadena, uh, but it is also the second poorest city in LA County. So it's that's a lot of poverty over a large population. When I was in college, Isaiah 58 convicted me of God's love for the poor, and I felt like I didn't understand His heart for the poor, and I wanted to because I wanted to understand more of God's heart. And so because of that, um, I moved to. Pomona, California, to the inner city, um, to work with the poor and see how God worked and what His love was like. When we were engaged, and decided that we would live at or, meet, or below the medium household income level for the nation, um, we looked at our budget, and we realized that one of the first things that was going to get impacted was uh, this honeymoon trip that we had been talking about, this overseas trip. What's amazing is a year later, we get a call from Target and they said, congratulations, you've won our honeymoon giveaway sweepstakes. And they said, and you, you registered for a telephone pan. Which we still have. Which we still have. And they said that automatically entered you into the telephone Target give, you know, honeymoon giveaway sweepstakes. What we won was a seven day, all expense paid trip to Tuscany, Italy. It was really amazing, but what I remember from that time was um, Bree turning to me and saying, this is God's confirmation that He will take care of us, that He will be generous, and He will give us more than, you know, than we can imagine. And that's been true. Growing up in the suburbs, I never really got to know many people. I never got to know my neighbors, people who drive their cars into their uh, garages and go in their house and come back out through their garages and, you know, I actually never saw anyone. And one day, Bree and I were walking down the street in front of our apartment and two boys stopped us in the street. And they asked us if we knew the Bible. And we said, yes, we do. And they said, would you teach it to us and our friends? And we said, sure, yeah. Come to our apartment Wednesday at 5 p.m., you know where we live, and we'll teach you the Bible. And so they show up Wednesday, 5 p.m., with half a dozen of their friends. Every week they show up to study the Bible. I've never had that happen to me before in the suburbs, but in a place of, where there's a lot of darkness, even the kids know, they feel, that there's got to be something more. There must be something better. And we get to be a part of that light, be a part of um, shining God's light here in this neighborhood. Um, living in Pomona in the inner city gives us a lot of unique ministry experiences. There was a girl named Jenny um, who had, I had known for many years, and we invited her to live with us at the point when her life started to fall apart. Well, in the first month, she put on 10 pounds because she was just eating regular meals again and getting up at a normal time, getting to school. I went to the high school and got her transcripts and she was still failing every class across the board. But in the remaining 12 weeks of school, she got all her grades up. She finished with A, Bs, and Cs. Uh, that year, as with you know, other years, you know, we continued to live on the medium household income level, which was about 45000 that year. But on, on January, we probably spent uh, an extra 30000 just on her. We saw Jenny's life completely change in 12 weeks from being a very undernourished and depressed young 
girl to um, really coming alive. And it was amazing that God would have us be a part of that transformation for her in her life. And I think we have to just believe as people who follow Jesus that our lives can make a difference um, when we follow him in what we're called to do. I, I had heard from a good friend, um, neighbors that we'd known for 15 years, that they were not living in their apartment anymore and they were living in their mom's place. Um, with a heroin addict in the living room and the TV on all night. And I could see in the kids' faces that um, their life was just crumbling and that they really weren't doing well because of the environment. Even though Irma's a great mom, Jerry's a great dad, um, it just, it, you can't really raise a family in a living room with uh, people coming in and out and heroin needles all around. Rhea and I started thinking about the idea that maybe God was calling us to invite the Raylesses, Jerry and Irma, and their kids to, to move in with us. It was amazing to be family together. And it was, you know, similar to when we had Jenny live with us, you know, the, the sense of family, her being part of our family, the, the power of family. When the Raylesses left, you know, I knew there was emotional challenges for Cadence some of the time, right? Because she did lose some of her space and she did lose some of her toys. And I asked her afterwards, well, what, what did you learn? It was hard, but, um, but then, yeah, but if you let it happen, your heart gets bigger and there's more, and there's room for more people, so it's really worth it. People will come to Tom and I sometimes and ask how they live their lives um, radically or you know, following Jesus um, in a similar way we do. And, and there's the one answer to that is you really have to ask Jesus what he's given you and what he's asking you to give away and what he's asking you to hold on to. So there's no a formula for what kind of life to live. There's only a listening to Jesus and a conviction. And all you have to do is ask how with what God's given you.